The Macau Grand Prix weekend is insane. There are four main classes of racing, with the Formula 3 Macau Grand Prix, the Motorcycle Grand Prix, and the FIA GT World Cup all taking to the streets. And finally, the Gear Race of Macau. It is the only main race that is a part of a championship, and has two races to score points in. It has been the final round of the year for the World Touring Car Championship from 2005 to 2014, and for the TCR International Series in 2015 and 2016. We're here because in 2016, the touring car world got turned upside down with controversies, crashes, red flags, rain, and the crowning of a champion. Let's dissect the 2016 Gear Race of Macau. Some background. In 2014, a new era of touring car racing was announced, later called TCR. Manufacturers build the cars and customers race them, with cost caps and a balance of performance, to make sure every driver could compete. The 2015 TCR International Series was by all accounts a success, with the Macau round having 35 TCR cars entered, with 24 qualifying for the races. TCR rookie but Macau specialist Rob Huff won race one and started from pole for race two. However, a massive accident eliminated all but nine of the 20 starters, with only seven seeing the checkered flag. This time won by Stefano Camini, helping him claim the inaugural TCR International title. Despite this being red flagged, everything else ran smoothly, and meant both 10 lap races ran the full distance. Four people went to Macau with a chance of the title. James Nash led the way on 262 points. Close behind, Stefano Camini was on 245. Pepe Oriola, Nash's teammate, was in 229, and Camini's teammate, Jean Carvenet, was in 223. 55 points were up for grabs, and with Macau being what it is, anyone could win. As anticipation built, everything was looking good. Then, things changed. For 2016, the current organising committee had been replaced by a bunch of other committees and organisations. They decided to allow different types of touring car to race including those from Britain and China, and that competitors could race on any tyre. TCR would still only allow michelin shod TCR cars to be classified for the championship, though. Another new rule was to only allow drivers who'd raced an eligible car that season to compete. Like last year, the Race 2 grid was the finishing order of Race 1, as opposed to regular TCR meetings, where Race 2 was the Race 1 grid with the top 10 reversed. No British team had the budget to race in Macau, but the Chinese showed interest. Rob Huff signalled his intent to add another victory to his already record-holding tally on the gear circuit. The 35-car strong entry list for the gear race was released. However, Rob Huff was missing. Having competed in the World Touring Car Championship, but in a more powerful 1.6-litre car, not 2 litres, he was ineligible. This was despite racing in a Chinese touring car for one round. But having only qualified 14th and raced to 16th and a retirement, this was deemed ineligible. There were 30 TCR cars, with the remaining five being Chinese. The most likely victors would come from the top TCR international regulars, but also world touring car driver Tiago Montero in a Honda Civic TCR. British and Chinese touring car driver Adam Morgan would likely be the front-running Chinese car, if not overall favourite, due to driving a more aero-based Mercedes-Benz than the TCR cars. Make that six Chinese cars, bringing the grid up to the limit of 36 cars. Visible cracks started to form between the Macau organisers and TCR International, with official confirmation that TCR would not return in 2017. Free practice one began with 36 cars rolling out. Actually, only 34 cars turned a lap. Adam Morgan never arrived in Macau, instead focusing on the British Touring Car Championship while Michael Ho, the catalyst of this accident in 2014, withdrew from the weekend, probably still in shame. The session was red flagged when Edgar Lau hit the barrier. Lo Hong K spun, Rafael Galliani crashed, and Terence C blocked the track, but none of these incidents caused a red flag, with William Locke stopping on track after the chequered flag as Tiago Montero top practice won. Traffic immediately became a major issue, with 34 cars out on track, and performance gaps of up to 31 seconds. 
Unsure with how the cars will compare, the TCR had a 20 kilogram weight break, while the Chinese had added 80 kilograms. Only one driver stated they would not use Michelin's, Tan Chi Lun on Yokohama's, and carried an additional 20 kilograms. It's found out that Nerik Wei and Edgar Lau both ran Yokohama's in practice one, both gaining themselves the 20 kilograms of ballast. TCR International strips them off their record books, and any press release them now ignores non-TCR cars, or cars not on Michelin's, instead calling them locals. Macau Grand Prix does almost the opposite, and does not recognise the TCR series in any press release, only occasionally putting points tables on the TV broadcasts. After a night's rest, the madness continued. Free practice 2. After one lap, Nash and Oriola touched into Lisboa. Douglas Cho crashed, bringing out the red flag. Gratchev smacked the wall hard. Lohan K spun again at Lisboa. William O'Brien nearly spun as Sonny Wong briefly joined Cho but dragged his car back to the pits. And it's the one that got away. Tin Street try hit the barrier. Not to be outdone by Kevin C. And William O'Brien finally made it to the barriers at the end of the session. XF1 driver Gianni Morbidelli, top practice two. Jordi Oriola, having replaced Loris Hesmond's at such short notice that his name was not even on the car in first practice, failed to run in any other session and withdrew from the event, leaving 33 cars. Outside of the car, James Nash said this about teammate Oriola. He's trying to prove a point, but doesn't need to prove it to me. Oriola stated, I guess he's under pressure, and seeing the championship is not as easy as he thought, especially with Kamini. Kamini said that we, Pepe and I, were playing our game. James is welcome to come and play. Kamini's the best. We'll be hearing from him again. Qualifying day. Bright and early with a 7.30 start. Or... At the crack of Sparrow! Q1 has everyone on track, with the top 12 progressing to Q2 and the fight for pole. Gratchev crashed on his first flying lap. Tin Street Try lost it again. Tin Street Try, sir, problem. While William Locke suffered from further engine issues. Morbidelli had also hit the wall. The lap quickly, then, with five minutes to go, it rained. No one improved, but it set up a very wet Q2. With the rain still falling, the gap between Q1 and Q2 was increased from five to 20 minutes. Lacour weren't the happiest about this. We were one of the only teams ready to go, and then they announced a 15 minute delay, so all the other teams are caught up now, which is a shame, but we'll still do it. <laughs> In the trickiest session of the weekend, 12 cars made their way out onto track. Visibility was poor to say the least. To see just exactly look at these conditions. And that's another thought I thought I hadn't thought of, which is on board with Kamini shows how tough it was. But uh, Kamini trying to follow Jean Carvane around. But really look, you can see him just keeping to the left of him because he doesn't want to get directly behind or go to the right of him. But then he's offline. He has to come into line here through Mandarin and look at him being very careful not to get too far on the gas. This is not easy at all. Oriola and Nash pushed their cars to the limit. Flipping the throttle and that was a moment. But the only mistake occurred when Nash ran down an escape road. As everyone started their final lap, Kamini led by a huge margin with Verne fifth, Oriola sixth, and Nash down in tenth. He's down in eleventh place. Kamini was having fun hand braking around the Melco hairpin on every lap. On his last lap, he got held up by Oriola and wasted time trying and succeeding to get past. Now, can he get up the inside of him? And he does so, yes, he's on the inside. It meant Vernet stole the limelight and took pole. Kamini was in second, Montero third, Nash in seventh, and Oriola down in tenth. With the top five scoring points, Nash now led Kamini by only 13 points, with Oriola 33 and Verne 34 points behind. Finally, the 107% rule came into play. For the first time, the stewards had the power to kick slow drivers out of the weekend. Only 23 cars were exempt from this, leaving 10 cars in the balance. TCR regulars and race winners Andrea Baliki and Mikhail Gratchev were allowed in, with Kevin C, who had been 12th and 14th in the practice sessions, joining them. Rafael Galliani qualified for the race, despite not setting a time within 107% of the leaders all weekend, while Lo Hong K, who had not even been within 11 seconds of the pace at any point, can also start. 
Last minute call up, William Locke failed to make the cut, along with Terence C, William O'Brien, Kenneth Marr, and Douglas Cho, who was so slow that the wet Q2 saw faster times than him. 28 cars remained. After qualifying, a brief roar of words broke out, with Oriola claiming he didn't mean to block Camini, while Nash complained of no reverse grid for race 2, something that would have helped him out a lot, and that the BOP was biased towards VW. Camini responded, Of course our special wet tyres from Michelin did their job. I'm sure he can relax and do his race without thinking about me. It'll all be fine. <laughs> Race day. After no Chinese cars were in the top 14, the 80 kilograms of extra ballast was removed. The schedule was tight, with the Macau Touring Car Cup taking place from 8.30 till 9. After two massive accidents, the race ran using all their time and more, eventually taking 42 minutes to complete. Already the race day was behind schedule, and the barrier repairs meant yet more time was used up. The drivers waited for the race to begin. I'm John Carlis, uh, racing for me and for the team. We'll see if I have to uh, to play uh, as teammates or if I have to uh, if I can go for myself. Of course, as I said yesterday, I'm going to try not to interfere with the championship. But you know, I'm here to try to win the race, so uh, I'll do anything I can to do it. But we just got to move forward and um, minimise the damage in race one and make sure we're in a good position for race two. TCR originally had between 10 and 12 to run their races, with the GT race at 12:55 and preparations for the all-important F3 race due to begin at 2.15 with a 3.30 start. The green flag lap began 40 minutes behind schedule, which meant delays were not an option, certainly not multiple, and any stoppage would mean lost laps. Rob Huff looked on at what could have been. But finally, after all the squabbles, complaining, crashing, tweaking performance, and yet more crashing, the racing began. Five lights went on, and then off. Race one was away. Camini made the best start, overtaking Vernet, with Montero also following through. Good start from the third place, man. But now VW up against it to defend. Comedy gets away well. Then the first crash of the day occurred. Three of the four Chinese cars came together through turn one, with Zha Ya Qi, Sunny Wong, and Jiang Yi Tang coming together, but each continued to finish the race. Morbidelli got a tank slapper at Mandarin and slammed into the wall, ending his day. Vernet made a mega pass on Montero to retake second. Great reaction by Vernet as he goes round the outside to grab second for moment anyway. Has he made it? Yes. And in fact, look at that. Further round the lap, Tan Chi Lun shunted in the S's section. With three incidents and two cars stuck on track, the race was red flagged. Sergei Afanasiev had clipped the back of David Kujai at the start and retired in the pits. 25 cars remained. Now in fourth and currently equal on points with Kamini. Everyone's thoughts turned to Nash. I'll try to, to do my best and to help James. Uh, then I'm behind uh, Nash now and uh, he was uh, in the uh, that, uh, second sector, quite slower. I, I wanted to attack him, but you know now if I attack him or... You know me that I know how to attack and I want to attack. My heart is telling me attack, but maybe I will have some, some, some crash and problem with him and I don't want to be the guy who is directly involved in the, in the championship battle. Good place to start behind the safety car in fourth place. Racing would resume soon after, but not before Kevin C had been given a drive through penalty. With six minutes 20 remaining, oh, race one restarted. Wasn't really holding them before reaching the start line, Lo Honke crashed but continued, while Petter Fullin pitted and retired. Nash got a poor run through turn one, allowing Borkovic an opportunity to get past. He took it. Homala looked to follow his teammate and go round the outside like Bernay did on lap one. But couldn't get ahead. Then the inevitable happened. The Mandarin corner. And I've been on Nash watch and uh, he's missed out, hasn't he? He's lost out. This time he has, yeah. Bolt on, no! Oh! Mayhem at Macau! Keep going. Nash's suspension broke immediately, while Homler retired and caused a pile up. No! The safety car came out after only 1 minute 30 of racing. Nash crawled back to the pits, his left rear wheel hanging off. The championship leader is out of the Macau Grand Prix. The car park was cleared with Homola lost and not knowing where to go. Now that is how brilliant Macau can be. Look how quickly. The final lap began under safety car, with Camini on course to take the championship lead and Nash to start around 20th. 
Nash could only limp the car back to the pits and hope for a miracle in race two. Commentator for darts once said, you can have Shakespeare, but this is real drama. <laughs> To be classified as high as possible, he crossed the line before being dragged back into the pits, which actually gained him five positions. At the end of the lap, the safety car pulled into the pits to let Kamini take the checker flag. The Swiss racer won and took the championship lead on 274 points, with Nash on 262 and due to start from 18. But they kept racing and racing and racing. No one seemed to know what was happening or what to do. The checker flag wasn't shown and there were no indications for the drivers who kept battling. Finally, the race was red flagged again. As the cars made it back to the pits, everyone realised only five laps of the ten were completed. 75% race distance was not met and only half points were given out. Kamini's win means he didn't lead the championship. With Nash on 262, Kamini is half a point back, but starting 17 places higher on the grid. Vernet and Oriola are both out of contention. Kamini came back into the pits, aggravated and complaining. Nash discussed the incident. I don't know how Homolo was or the other B3 car was going to get round me. Uh, I ran out of road and he was still there, so we came together. A bit unfortunate, really, because he didn't need that position, and I did. So, anyway, never mind. Here is what Homolo would later apologise. I took a risk, and I'm sorry about what happened. I do apologise to James. Another car out. Crosses the flag. They're in the grandstand. Good job, Homolo. Good job. That's what I want to believe. After a phenomenal repair job, Nash's team fixed the car in only 15 minutes. 21 cars would now start the race from the grid, with a further two, Burry and Tashi, from the pits. The humidity was high as the cars lined up once again. All Kamini had to do was beat Nash, and he would be a double champion. On the formation lap, Huey pulled into the pits and retired. For the final time, the gantry lit up, and the racing began. Here we go. The lights come on! they go away we go good start this time from Kamini good start from Montiero he's already up to second place and already vying for the lead brilliant start by the Portuguese Tiago Montero has got the lead here at Macau absolutely supreme and look at Oriola already and he bumps into the back Nash had gained three positions by turn one before going round the outside of Kujaya into Mandarin and sweeping past Jiang Tang Yi into Lisboa to get up to 12th before the end of the lap, he was in 11th past Galliana. We finally have a green flag lap, only two hours behind schedule. Out of shot, Nash overtook both Lau and Shritri to move into 9th. Meanwhile, the top five were glued together. Borkovic ran the car to the limit, which gave him a chance to pass Vernet. He couldn't pull it off and paid for it as Oriola flew by. Nash copied his teammate and went past Baliki for 8th, again unseen by the cameras. Then, near the end of lap three, it happened again. Flags in the uh, in the crowd here, the bumper crowd that we Red get flag. in Macau. Goodness. <laughs> Wong carried too much speed into Moorish Hill and blocked the circuit. The pileup put Wong, Tsi and Tashi out. Again, no one was sure what to do, so they made their way back to the pits. The drivers shared their thoughts again. We would do some show for the public. But I, I don't want to, to lose the championship for something like this. I think I'm pretty quick enough for that. You also have a job to do to protect Stefano. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. I, I, I'm going to pass him. Uh, I don't know how. I don't know if, if, it, if, it, if it will be successful or not, but I, I really need to, to try. Lap down cars Kajaya, Nerik Wei, Lo Hong Kei, and Zhang Yai Ki completed a lap under red flag, but Ki crashed out of Lisboa further jeopardising the race restart. The time allocated for the race ran to zero while the cars sat in the pit lane. After much deliberation, the race would restart for three more laps, with one behind the safety car to start. As the race would now be seven laps instead of ten, it again meant half championship points, but Kamini still only had to finish ahead of Nash. Seventeen cars were left. The final restart 
he's going to attack. We're racing at Macau once again. Honke crashed again on the safety car restart, ending his weekend. Vernet swept past Kamini, putting Swiss driver within reach of Oriola. All over his exhaust, they came close to touching more than once. Nash was stuck behind Gratchev, losing him the championship. With 8th place, he would score 2 points, while Kamini had 3rd and 7.5. The last lap began. Oriola overtook Kamini, who would now only score 6 points. Nash still could not pass Scratchev. Kamini almost crashed into Oriola, but nothing could stop him now. One more corner to go, and it's our Ben. Out of it he comes, nice and smooth. Montero won the race, but Kamini took the title with 267.5 points, only three and a half more than Nash. Oriola in third, and Stefano Kamini comes across the line. Macau Grand Prix screensaver popped up but was quickly replaced by Montero celebrating his first win in Macau. For a brief moment, the winners were ecstatic. The championship and the race weekend were over. After the dust had settled, everyone realised what had gone on. All involved apologised for the poor performances and lack of racing that occurred. Embarrassed, everyone left there with their head in their hands, apart from Montero and Camini. They achieved what they needed. With a race and a championship won respectively. Yeah, a wonderful emotional moment for Stefano and his father. As they share a special moment together. He's the man holding the sign that tells it, you and everybody else that he's the 2016 champion. And what of Nash? In two years, he's yet to win another race, let alone challenge for a title. James Nash, feeling the heat, feeling the humidity.